of the field for the playing of the national anthem. Thank you, Joanna, and on behalf of the Board of Education, administration, faculty, and staff of District 208, it's my pleasure to welcome you to RB's 103rd commencement exercise. Tonight's ceremony. Tonight's ceremony is being broadcast live over RB TV and on our local cable networks. And please, if you would, out of respect to the graduates, uh, disable your cell phones uh, at this time. Well, graduates, uh, you and I are at interesting crossroads in our careers. Uh, for you, a first commencement, and for me, uh, my last. And so I've gone through some of my past commencement addresses, and uh, tonight I would just like to share with you uh, some of the pearls of wisdom that I have shared with graduates uh, over the years. Uh, the cartoonist Gary Trudeau uh, once said that no one should be permitted to receive a diploma until they've been properly sedated. And of course, uh, the speakers in this uh, capacity, that's one of their roles, but uh, hopefully I'll not sedate you. Um, one of the pearls, and uh, uh, in the practical category, Kurt Vonnegut in addressing MIT graduates uh, provided the advice that the only uh, statistically reliable and scientifically supportable advice that he could give to graduates was to use sunscreen. All other, and you could have used a little this afternoon, I think, or this morning when you were practicing. Um, all other admonitions are either matters of opinion, conjecture, or ran random experience. He did go on to suggest uh, that you not spend time reading beauty magazines because truly they do nothing for your self-esteem. And then also in a practical category, and I want you to really listen to this. It's an item from the family section of the Tribune several years ago. It costs $50 to get a tattoo, but $1,000 to have it removed. And that is a painful process, and it's not covered by insurance. 
So I really want you to think about this as you go through future decision-making processes. Uh, the comedian Flip Wilson used to have a saying, the devil made me do it. Well, keep that little guy off of your shoulder and uh, just remember that sometimes getting out of a, fri a frivolous act uh, is more expensive than uh, a moment of indiscretion. Two of the individuals that I have quoted more frequently than others are uh, the artist Georgia O'Keeffe and the author Marion Wright Edelman. And so uh, a couple of passages uh, from uh, first the painter uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, and I quote her, one works because it's the most interesting thing to do. The days one works are the best days. Other days you hurry through to get things to keep your life going, you shop, you fix the roof, you take the dog to the vet, but you hurry to get through these things in order to get back, in her case, to the painting or to the work. That's the high spot. And so you do the mundane to get back to the interesting thing, your life works. And so for you graduates, as you prepare for further education and a career, go in the direction that uh, is of interest to you, uh, that's worthy of your talent and of your passions. And in this process, I believe that education is the key. To achieve an income that satisfies your basic life needs, education is a route to that. But beyond a certain level uh, of life fulfillment, there's little correlation between income and happiness. So related to this theme, I want to uh, quote from Marion Wright Edelman, a, a book, A Measure of Our Success, in which she wrote several letters to her children. And in it, she said, they were born God's original. Set yourself on a course that celebrates your talent, your originality, and don't try to be someone else's copycat. Uh, the essay, Dance Like No One's Watching, says that happiness is a journey and not a destination. So on this journey, work like you don't need money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like no one's watching. Bulldogs, you are 342 originals. And so get out there, wag your bulldog tails, <laughs> and make a difference in this world, in a world that really needs difference makers. Thank you. And at this point, I would like to introduce Allison Horning, who is the president of the Student Association, to make some remarks. Allison. To all of the fellow Bulldogs, faculty members, parents, and friends, welcome. We never thought this day would come. We prayed for its quick delivery, crossed days off our calendars, and posted how many days left we had as our Facebook statuses. For many of you, graduation is a reason to celebrate, a reason to feel nostalgic, a reason to cry, and it means that you'll never have to hear my voice being blasted through a microphone or a loudspeaker ever again, which, <laughs> which I'm sure many of you are thankful for. Over these past four years as a Bulldog, we have all had to face certain challenges. As an entire school, we all pushed through the construction period with months and months of drilling throughout classes and the fire alarms going off during the cold and rainy winter days. As a class, we all were out through the infamous flood week, the first snow day in over 12 years, and even the fire alarm at this past homecoming when we all stood out in the rain in our Lady Gaga attire. Some of you may not have seen these as challenges, but on the days that you had to get out of bed and make up those days that we missed, I'm sure you were thinking that they were challenging at the time. As individuals, getting through high school is one big challenge as well. 
And as we are sitting here today in our cap and gowns, it is clear that all of us have overcome the challenges that RB thrusted upon us. Back four years ago on our first day of high school, we were little freshmen, all nervous about the first day at a new school, wondering if all the rumors were true, and confused about the elevator passes that people always joked about. As time flew by, we familiarized ourselves with RB and were able to handle all of the, all of the challenges that faced us. By junior year, we all stressed over the ACT and our AP courses and whether we would even get into college. Of course, after we spent months writing and revising our college essays. And now, we all sit in these chairs looking back on our four years as a Bulldog and asking ourselves, did I really cry about that grade for my sophomore English final? All of our high school challenges seem mind-bogglingly small and unnecessary at this point because we are all now officially adults, moving on to doing bigger and better things with our lives. High school not only prepared us academically, but also mentally for the future that lies ahead. They say that what does not kill you makes you stronger, and that mindset applies to us right now. Our four years as Bulldogs pushed us to become much stronger and wiser people for when they set us off into the real world. Each of us were put to the test in high school, and achieving greatness is the reward. Challenges are designed to push you and make you a better person in the end, which is what high school is all about. Over these four short years, every single one of us had a challenge, but the ultimate challenge was graduating. So congratulations, class of 2011. We all pushed through RB's challenges and have successfully completed high school. We are all off into the real world once that diploma is in our hands with a brand new set of challenges, such as living on your own, being away from home, and actually making it to an 8 a.m. class without oversleeping. It will be a tough but rewarding experience, much like high school was to many of you. Congratulations once again, and remember, it's great to be a Bulldog. And now presenting the senior class gift is the senior class president, Emily Waz. Good evening, friends and family. My name is Emily Waz, and I am the class president for the class of 2011. I was given the honor to present the senior gift. The gift was made possible through the funds raised by the class officers and our class sponsors. Our class will be remembered by the cla plaques displayed on a new pair of 72 inch solid wood benches. They will be placed in the waiting area between the doors at the new main entrance. We thought these benches would add meaning and character to that part of the building. In addition, our class will be donating the remaining funds to one of Riverside Brookfield's most dedicated clubs the Special Olympics. Many students from this graduating class played a major role in Special Olympics, so we were pleased to be given the chance to help them out. Lastly, our class would like to give a big thank you to Mrs. Hughes and Ms. Dean, because without their help, this would not have been possible. Thank you. Speaking next is Dr. David Bonnet, our superintendent. A long-standing uh, tradition at RB is the presentation of medals to the top 10 students. Uh, this year, because of a tie, uh, we do have the top 11 students. And presenting the medals will be uh, Board President Matt Cindy and Vice President John Keene. Uh, students, as I call your name, if you would uh, go up and receive your medals uh, from the Board Officers. Benjamin Bergstrom. Jacob DeLuy. Robin Jensen.
Elliot Lauthen. Colette Lucas. Benjamin Mitchell. Brenna Mossman. Claire Schreit. David Tomasek. Gabrielle Uloa. And Catherine Walsh. Students at RB in the top 10% of the class select from that group two individuals who will address the class uh, representing uh, all 342 graduates. Uh, to begin, uh, Jacob DeLuey will deliver the first senior address. And while Jacob is coming to the podium, if you would one more time uh, congratulate the medalists. Thank you. <laughs> when I was chosen to give a speech at graduation, I had no idea what to speak about. Am I supposed to be reminiscing or offering advice? I'll admit, I googled the top 10 commencement speeches and read a few of those. They all told these stories of life-changing moments, and as I was reading them, I soon realized that nearly all of them were written by the Bill Gates and the Steve Jobs of the world. They had this wealth of experience to gather from, and they, because they dropped out of school to start companies that made them millions of dollars. Now, I haven't made millions of dollars, yet. But nevertheless, I decided that over my 18 years, I've gained at least some experience that I can share. Each story shows a different time in my life. One is pretty happy, the other, not so much. But life is hard, and one of the things I've learned is that you need to be able to roll with the punches. Don't worry, guys. Now, there are many experiences that have taught me to take a hit, but none so much as the four matchmaker surveys, surveys I've taken. <laughs> For the parents in the audience who don't know what a matchmaker is, I can sum it up in four words. Most important thing ever. <laughs> it's a survey that asks you psychologically revealing questions like, when you kiss, are your eyes open, closed, or on your wallet? <laughs> and it will determine your soulmate. But that's not really important. What's actually important is the graph on the back. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, and there may be a few students who don't, there's a graph on the back of the matchmaker survey that looks a lot like a sine curve. 
which is math geek speak for wave. It shows over the course of a month, the days where you'll have good days and the days where you'll have bad days. It goes above, above and below this line and you can read plus five energy points. It's gonna be a good day or uh-oh, I'm at minus 10, better prepare for the worst. The first time I saw this, I pulled out a big, no. There's no way that a matchmaker, <laughs> there's no way that a matchmaker can predict how good your day will be. But in spite of its ridiculous nature, matchmaker does get one thing right. Life does go up and down. It has peaks and valleys, high points and low points, and everybody will experience both the highs and the lows. The lowest point in my life was around fourth and fifth grade. At that time, it seemed like the world was conspiring against me, and I didn't feel like I fit in at school, and I wasn't happy there. At home, I would take my anger out on my family. I wasn't ever happy, and I had no motivation to do anything. Had I taken a matchmaker back then, my graph might have covered two whole pieces of paper. But the curious thing about that matchmaker survey is that for each low point, there's also a high point. And so soon I met some new friends, and they had no idea who I was or what my story was, but they were there for me, and life got better. In matchmaker terms, I was positive again. It took me a while to realize it, but I came out of this experience with more knowledge and experience than I could get by reading a psych book or a self-help book. The first thing I learned was perspective. I want you to remember that if you hit rock bottom, if your life doesn't seem like it can get any worse, it's probably because it can't. So remember, you have nowhere, nowhere to go but up. Life can only get better, and it's important to remember that it will get better. Everything ends, elementary school, middle school, even high school, and so do the worst times in your life. Always remember the immortal words of the Lord of the Rings philosopher Samwise Gamgee. But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. <laughs> I, I also realized how much of a difference certain people or events can make in your life. Our choices define who we are and what we become, but what also defines us are the people we meet. The new friends I made changed my life forever. They set me on a path that was most certainly different from the one I was on. They made the effort to offer me the hand of friendship, and by that simple act, life got better. I was able to enjoy school and meet new people like Taylor. Taylor is the other half of this senior speaker duo, and I met her way back in the great school that was Hauser Junior High. <laughs> back in Hauser, Taylor and I had a lot of classes together. Back then, everybody took the exact same thing, so our schedules overlapped quite a bit. We had some good times together, and I'm sure about 20 people in, the, in this graduating class will remember the fun we had in Brode's eighth grade English. <laughs> uh, but then freshman year started. A very wise man once told me that going to RB is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because, because it has so much to offer its students and so much variety. And a curse because there's no way that you can do everything you want to. So by the end of first semester senior year, I'd taken exactly zero classes with Taylor. We hadn't been in the same club together, and we hadn't talked much over the three and a half years during which we were separated by a whopping six lockers. The same wise man pointed out that it wasn't merely bad luck that prevented us from having overlapping classes, it was our choices. It is well known that my best and favorite subjects are math and science. For Taylor, it's English and the arts. While I was playing chess, Taylor was practicing for the speech team. While I was doing math problems for the math team, Taylor was rehearsing for the musical. We had each chosen different paths to take, and it just so happened that those paths never overlapped until our second semester of senior year. You see, everybody has a path to take. Everybody makes choices that affect their future, and oftentimes we are making these choices on a daily basis. As Matchmaker has shown, not all of the times in our life are good times, but in spite of that fact that we have bad days and bad times, we always have the ability to choose what our future will be. So what I want you to do is make sure that you pick the future that you want. Don't do something because it'll make you famous or rich or because it is the easiest thing to do. And please don't do something because your parents want you to. Pick the path that will give you the most happiness. 
If you hate the idea of working in a cubicle from nine to five every day, don't choose to major in business because you think that that will be the easiest way to graduate college. If you love the wilderness, maybe the best thing for you to do is to move to Canada and be a backpacking guide. There's nothing worth doing unless it is what you want to do. Taylor and I both chose completely different paths to take. We were both happy doing it, and we both ended up on this stage speaking. If you do what you love, then you will find success. Thank you. In light of our differences, Jake and I decided that we could absolutely not write a speech together because we were never compatible on our matchmakers. And you don't mess with matchmaker. So I'm going to conclude this graduation speech, which is interesting because from a literary standpoint, I hate writing conclusions. But hey, así es la vida. <laughs> the past couple of weeks leading up to this day have been a bit surreal for me and I know for some of you mostly because of the fact that this single day is the culmination of four years of hard work. I personally, and I know many of you, have spent time recently reflecting on the past four years and even the years before. The experiences had, the places traveled, and the people met throughout our lives thus far, all intertwined to molding and shaping us as individuals up until this point. We have all had different journeys over the past 18 years, some more challenging than others, yet all comprised of different and individual passions. Jake and I are a perfect example. He has spent his time in high school participating in the analytical and research-based aspects of education, delving into the subjects of math and science, while competing in chess, cross-country, and tennis, among other activities. I, on the other hand, have pursued the liberal arts over the past four years, having been involved in choir and spending my time developing my passion for English while participating in golf, speech, and the musical during my high school career. Numbers and analyses mean as much to Jake as music and literature do to me. Yet in spite of our differences in journeys, we have both ended up behind this podium today, experiencing the same thing. We all are now brought to the same place, our graduation, because of our success over the past four years. And this ceremony may seem like a goodbye, but commencement means beginning. The past decade or so of schooling, piecing together our individual journeys, have all been leading up to this point. All these years have equaled one step across the threshold of the doorway to our lives. We are just beginning our independent lives, but the amazing thing is, is that it just gets better. Over the past four years, we have endured raging floodwaters, upheld the color-coded character counts pillars, and successfully tuned out Mr. Passarella's jokes during lunch. Please don't mess up my name. We have completed the ACT however many times, <clears throat> Jake, taken countless AP tests, finished numerous college apps, and asked for multiple teacher recommendations minutes before they were due for submission. And whether you feel that the past four years have gone by fast or slow, our high school career has come to a close. And to quote Jeans, the security guard, it's time to go. We've all heard him say this down the social science hallway since we were freshmen, while snapping his fingers and swinging his arms, moving us along to our next class before the bell. But now this same statement is spurring us onto our lives and urging us not to be late. Over a decade of learning and working has equaled one step through this figurative doorway, metaphor. And now it's up to us, coming from different backgrounds and having traveled different paths, to embark on the extraordinary journey ahead. Looking out at all of you fellow seniors and teachers in these gowns, they're so flattering. I can't help but think how blessed I've been to have had our paths cross at RB. I have had the pleasure of knowing and learning alongside some of you while being taught by the teachers present here today. And knowing that without you all, I would not be the individual that I am today, I thank you for your impact on my life and will carry you with me wherever I go understanding that we are all now part of each other's lives. We do not accomplish things alone, but as a unit comprised of remarkable individuals met along our separate journeys. 
We never touch anyone's life so lightly that we do not leave a mark. So I'd like to say thank you from all of us to our parents, families, friends, and teachers, all of whom have made immense impacts on our lives. Looking back, Riverside Brookfield High School has treated us well. And to know that there is so much more in store for each of us in the future is exhilarating. So go forth, class of 2011, because it just gets better. Congratulations. And now we will enjoy a performance by the RB Madrigals and Chamber Choir of For Good by Stephen Schwartz, directed by the fabulous Miss Diane Morelli. Thank you very much, Ms. Morelli and students. Honored members of the Cook County District 208 School Board and proud guests, 
As the instructional leader of Riverside Brookfield High School, it is my task and my pleasure to officially present the 103rd graduating class of District 208, the class of 2011. <laughs> this group of students has excelled during their time here in high school. In academics, sports, activities, and service, their accomplishments combine into a long, impressive list. Let's highlight just a few details. Members of this class have contributed to the success of our sports teams that have advanced further than the teams before them in basketball, volleyball, track, and hopefully tomorrow, base baseball. <laughs> students from this class broke individual and group school records in a variety of sports. They won numerous academic competitions in world languages and math and earned awards in art, music, dance, television, chess, and the culinary arts. The students of the class of 2011 have certainly amazed us with their talent, intelligence, resolve, and creativity. But this group is admired for more than just their many and diverse talents. It is their heart that has uniquely defined them as a class. Together, they volunteered countless hours in service to their community, engaging in tasks such as protecting the environment through recycling, socializing with senior citizens on a weekly basis, tutoring fellow students, restoring endangered habitats, serving as election judges, and cutting their hair or shaving their heads to raise money to fight childhood cancer. Whenever there was a need to be filled, the class of 2011 answered the call. Academically, members of the class of 2011 pushed themselves, taking the challenge of rigorous classes and working hard right up until the end. 263 of the students sitting before you were honored at Senior Awards Night for reaching excellence on the school, state, and national levels. As a class, they have been offered $4,848,940 in scholarships money. And they will branch out across the United States and the globe to 267 different colleges and universities. But students, it was your kindness to one another, the way you came out to support each other's events, the pride you showed in your peers' accomplishments, the school spirit you displayed, and the manner in which you set a positive example to the younger students that so thoroughly impressed and completely charmed me throughout the year. The way you celebrated the end of your high school experience during your senior picnic a week ago is a perfect example of what makes you such a great group. Truly, you are a very special class. While I'm confident that you are ready for this next phase in your life, like most adults, I can't resist the temptation at this moment in time to give you just a little bit of advice. I'll try to be brief and to the point. As you know, students, the six ethical values of character counts have been a topic that I've spoken to you about this year. Attempting to live up to these pillars of trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship have been personally and professionally helpful to me in my life. Beyond words, actually. I encourage you to use these or other ethical values to guide your decision making as you move beyond RB. Being a person of good character at all times, now that's where the challenge will come in for you. After high school, when you're on your own, independent from parents, and free from the constant influence of teachers and the occasional inter interference by your administrators, your challenge will be to remain steadfastly a person of good character at precisely those moments when it is the most difficult of all. Maturity, you will discover, comes not from following the crowd, but from making good choices that adhere to your core personal ethical values. Those values that define you will be tested most at times when you are confronted with tough ethical choices, when you find yourself out of control in some aspect of your life, or when you're tempting, tempted with or facing temptations. Your true character is revealed in challenging times when events don't go your way, when you don't win the big game, when you're encouraged to do something dangerous or insensitive to others, when you lose an argument you felt so passionate about, are in a car accident caused by someone else's negligence, fall victim to someone's unfair or unethical treatment, or experience the pain of exclusion, ridicule, or prejudice. Who will you be at those defining moments? Will that event define you? Will your adversary change your nature? Will you be weak and give in to temptation? Will you become bitter, vengeful, petty, unforgiving, or worse yet, apathetic? 
Or will you hold true to the definition of yourself that you're working so hard and so long to consciously create? Will you be able to ward off the two main threats to your good character, impulsivity and ego, and instead take the time to consider the implications of your choices and decisions? In order to transcend whatever challenge you face in the future, ask yourself in that moment in time, who defines me? If you answer that with a resounding, I do, then remind yourself of the values you hold dear and let those values guide you on your way. In conclusion, class of 2011, though I have only known you for one fleeting but eventful year, it has been my honor to have shared that year with you. My deepest congratulations go to you and your families, and I wish you the brightest future possible. At this time, it is my distinct privilege to formally present the class of 2011. Distinguished members of the Board of Education, I hereby certify that the seniors present here tonight have completed all graduation requirements mandated by the State of Illinois and District 208 and, as such, are eligible to have their diplomas awarded to them. Class of 2011, you may now present yourselves to receive your diplomas. Please welcome to the podium Assistant Principal, Mr. John Passarella, who has the honor of reading the names of all of our graduating seniors. Brianna Elise Atkins. <laughs> Natasha R. Alvarez. Alejandro Amaya. Carly Marie Anderson. Tangeria Kalichi Anderson. Bridget Allison Antos. Emily Dewey Arp. Ricardo Luis Arroyo. Lauren Page Bayachki. Michael Anthony Bellavia. Angelica Rose Bersheim. Nathan Virgil Berg. Benjamin David Bergstrom. Eric Scott Burnson. Kirsten J. Bershide. Jason A. Beagle. Amanda F. Byro. Alyssa Ann Blando. Robert Scott Bochar. Excuse me, Bochar. TJ Anthony Bongiorno. Kathleen P. Boyce. Keith D. Brower. Jennifer Louise Braun. Lynn Ann Bray. Sean A. Brennan. Zachary Allen Brickta. Andrew Daniel Brandos. Howard A. Brundage V. Michael Andrew Buckley. Christopher A. Bew. Victoria Grace Burris. Keegan James Buttimer. 
Nicole Shansina Caffrey. Emily May Kane. Brittany Annette Caldwell. Kayla Marie Canizzo. James Vincent Capone. Michael Alexander Cardenas. Celsa F. Carmona. Christy Marie Cassano. Omarelli Castro. James Joseph Cifaldi. Caitlin Michelle Clark. Love you, baby. Sarah K. Clemency. I love you. Your dad's in the front row. Maeve Elizabeth Clarity. Bridget M. Colazzo. Amanda M. Collins. Ellie M. Connolly. Ryan T. Considine. Cassandra Renee Cook. Joseph Matthew Correa. Valerie M. Correa. Benjamin Fairchild Cox. Samuel Preston Cox. Joseph Theodore Crawford. Cuevas, right? yeah. Cuevas. Say it again. Cuevas. Christopher Joseph Cuevas. Jacob Anthony Curtin. Jake, Jacob Andrew Cherak. Richard William Doms. Taylor Renee Dalton. Rebecca N. Deeds. Say it, Nicanor. Nicanor De La Torre. Rachel Lynn Denini. Excuse me, Rachel Lynn Denini. Vito Joseph Durango. I think he paid them to say that. Brendan Austin Deweese. Middle name. Kevin Kang Din. You are amazing. I love you. Amazing. Jacob R. Deweese. Joan M. Dodaro. Michael Wiley Damris. Lisa Marie Donovan. Brian J. Doyle. Benjamin Caleb Drake. Cesar M. Duarte. Diana N. Dumas. Rebecca L. Durek. 
Alexander Paul Ziagua. <laughs> Something happened over there. Must have been connected to that thing. George William Ebright. Trey Aaron Edwards. Kelsey Aaron Egger. Michael A. Elliott. Molly Caitlin Ely. Cynthia Esparza. Joseph Thomas Evans. Excuse me. Jeffrey Thomas Evans. Bianca Favela. Kayla Pilar Fernandez. Gordon McQueen Fiesler. Jason Scott Flam. Daniel P. Fleming. Anthony Michael Fiore. Audrey L. Gabrick. Luis Ioana Gangwear. Angelica Garcia. Gabriela Adele Garcia. John Frank Garcia. Janice Nicole Garcia. Ryan Robert Gay. Charles H. Gadula. Lauren M. Gestis. Joseph Michael Giaquinta. Patricus Gladstein. Alexi Golabak. Anna Maria Gomez Lopez. Alexandria Y. Gonzalez. Anthony Gonzalez. Ethan A. Gonzalez. Luis Martin Gonzalez. Rafael Gonzalez III. Yasmin Anais Gonzalez. Mikael Arnett Gordon. Jennifer Lynn Grasser. Amanda Lauren Gregus. Brianna Antoinette Griggs. Jacqueline Ann Grisafi. Martin P. Gross. Simona Gudinas. 
Nathaniel Thomas Handley. Allison Marie Hannigan. Samantha Beverly Hansen. Angel M. Harrington. Veronica Nicole Harris. Jacob William Hedrick. Armando Hernandez. Aaron D. Hill. Thomas Von Holacek. Allison M. Hornung. Tai Fi Hu. Michael J. Hudasek. Michael Joseph Huffheinz. Robert Lee Hughes. Eleanor Louise Hunter. Ellie Marie Hutchison. Tyler John Hutchison. Sean Wang. <laughs> Ryan D. Jackson. Christopher W. James. Aaron M. James. Robin Elizabeth Jensen. Deborah Christine Johnson. Jacob John Johnson. Cynthia Juarez. Elizabeth Marie Karchi. Stephanie Samantha Causal. Joanna Margaret Keene. Marianne Kemper. Jason James Kerber. Cameron Christopher Ketchmark. Jacqueline King. Jacob Howard Kintner. Brittany Jean Kerner. Drew Mitchell Kohler. Brittany Elaine Kosick. Brittany Carla Kozlowski. Eric Dylan Kramer. Kevin William Kraus. James R. Krupa. Adam Mark Kabechko. Corey Thomas Kahinka. Joanna Marie Coomer. Rachel Marie Kunkel. 
Jacqueline Ann Lamana. Paul E. Landall. Anna M. Langosh. Samantha Elizabeth Larson. Michael T. LeBeau. Alexander Daniel Lemon. Paris S. Lewis. <laughs> Mary Rose Lacari. Jory Ann Lima. Thomas Ian Linehan. Rima D. Linticus. Karen P. Lopez. Nina Marie Lopez. Tiffany M. Lopez. Elliot James Loughton. Colette Catherine Lucas. Justin James Lynch. Gabriella J. Magalon. Tawny L. Majetic. Ryan Patrick Mandera. Ryan David Marino. Excuse me. Brian D David Marino. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Markowski. Daisy Marquez. Haley Jean McCarthy. Stephen Charles McCrory. Dirk Dion McDonald. Brendan McGuire. Melanie Lynn McGuire. Austin Daniel McCain. Aaron Katie Rose McKenna. Andrew T. Milani. Kyle Anthony Miller. Julie, excuse me, Julie Ann Manella, Benjamin Frederick Mitchell, Brandon Fisher Mitchell, Cecilia M. Mitchell, Peter M. Mitchell. Anna E.A. Mandragon. <laughs> Katrina Moravec. Aston M. Moravec. <laughs> Nicholas Alexander Marino. Charles F. Morrissey. Brendan Lawrence Mortimer. Brenna Kathleen Mossman. Kayla M. Muldoon. Joseph Francis Murphy. 
Mikaris Evangelo Neely. Joseph John Nemec. Rebecca Jean Nemec. Max William Oberholzer. Eduardo Oriella. Jessica B. Padilla. Padilla. Excuse me. Jessica B. Padilla. Jessica P. Badia. Anthony Palacio. Alessandra Marie Panaski. Luisa Marie Parchek. Christopher John Patchett. Cecilia Catherine Payne. Rebecca Lynn Pendola. E Eva C. Perez. Veronica, Veronica Rocio Perez. Diana, Diana. Diana Petrenko. <laughs> Megan Kelly Pignato. Oh, God. <laughs> Robert Anthony Pluster. <laughs> Tyler S. Polanski. <laughs> Jason Stephen Pommy. Dennis Gary Potomianos. Rachel Savannah Powell. Kevin Prado Herrera. Vincent Michael Principe. Molly Catherine Quayley. Tyler Anthony Radek. Fabian Ramirez. Melissa A. Ramirez. Dominic R. Raba. Wolfgang Maximilian Recht. Anna Marie Reyes. Nathaniel J. Reyes. Matthew James Riedel. Isaias Anthony Rivera. Brian T. Robertson. Douglas Thomas Robertson. Louis Fitzhenry Roebling. Rachel M. Rodriguez. Nicholas C. Rome. Jonathan David Rosenberg. Danielle L. Ryan. Kiri Elizabeth Rids. Alexa N. Sabedra. Maria Elizabeth Sanchez. Stephanie Sarusi. 
Zachary Dale Sawyer. Andrew Michael Scafidi. Kristen M. Schaefer. Catherine Murphy Sheffer. Jonathan Paul Sherrick. Kyle Matthew Sherrick. Christopher Paul Schomer. Claire E. Schreit. John Thomas Schreit. Make sure you say Edward Santa, all right? No. Yes, yeah, yeah. Edward? Edward, that's my normal name. Oh, okay. Anthony, Anthony Edward Siana. Lauren Elizabeth Shake. Catherine L. Shamrock. Clarissa Meredith Shaw. Stacy Renee Sherman. Tyler Joseph Siebert. Sarah Ann Signor. Lana, excuse me, Lana Elizabeth Samigliano. David Anthony Skaransky. Thank you. David Anthony Skaransky. Watoris Levon Slater. George Antonio Smith. James Michael Smith. Luke F. S. Saldano. Don't even think about it. Zachary Kenneth Solinger. Jacqueline Renee Sprague. Haley Rose St. Paul. Sade Latrice Stanton. You know me, Pastor Ola, don't get this wrong. Desiree S. Starks. Benjamin A. Stelter. Lisa Marie Steffen. Philip Dominic Stepnowski. Jonathan Stevanovich. Christopher Glenn Sternad. Anne Noel Saventi. Sarah Louise Sidlow. Gerda Thomasunis. Kelly Francis Tokarski. David Michael Tomasek. Alfredo J. Torres. David, David Eugene Tortorisi. Matthew John Euler. Gabrielle Nicole Uyoa. Brian Daniel Valencia. Genesis Vargas. Samantha Renee Velez. Christopher Villarreal. 
There you go, Chris. Where's your name tag? Right there. Nicholas J. Vince. <laughs> Melanie R. Viscariello. <laughs> Cody Alexander Vitek. Kaylee Morgan Vitek. Thomas Eamon Vohasek. Cassie Lynn Vananik. Emily Ann Waz. Jordan A. Wagner. Catherine Ann Walsh. Eleanor Ann Wazak. Zachary Jarrell Watkins. Megan Mary Welch. Christian Andrew West. Michelle Ann Wilford. Joseph L. Wilkinson. Casey Christopher Willoughby. Bradley Stephen Wilson. David Michael Wolak. Christopher David Yarka. Kelsey Elizabeth Zadarski. Eric Lee Zeitlin. Maggie May Zeleny. Michael James Zeman. Hervoy Zolo. Joseph Michael Zick. Kiada Ercoloni. <laughs> Fabian Christopher Winter. Okay, class of 2011, listen up. There's one more thing you have to do before you're officially a graduate. You all need to put your ha right hand on the tassel over your mortarboard, and all together on the count of three, we're going to put them over to the other side, the left side. One, two, three. You are now official alums. <laughs>